I was hoping that this video lecture would have only one part, but um, I spent some time explaining the ideas of longer products of measures and relating independence of random variables to product measures of their, in their distribution. So here's the last part of this last video lecture of this unit. And it is, it is a proposition which it basically says, so we, we have this notation from previous modules. What is this? This is the joint uh, cumulative distribution function of, this, of these random vectors. Uh, if you like to represent random vectors with this tilde below it or whatever. So this is F tilde of A. So A is a vector, X is a vector. And if x tilde of a equals the product j going from 1 to n of x fx j of a j, if this is true for every a, this implies that the variables x1, x2, xn are independent. This is what this proposition is saying. And this is. I, I, this proposition, I, I like this proposition very much. Uh, this, of course, this in this, this direction is pretty obvious. This direction, it's simply use the property of independence by taking X, this is X i belongs to A i, where A i equals minus infinity A i. So there's um, no no mystery here. We just express this event in terms of the event x i belongs to a i, and this a i is a Borel set. So one direction really uh, it, it is to, to be expected. And what this proposition is saying is we just need to write down the joint cumulative distribution function of a random vector. Note that this the expression for this function, it factorizes in order to conclude that they, that they are independent, which is something which in principle was a much stronger property. Yeah. So um, again, it is this direction here, which uh, strikes me uh, the most. It's this, this direction here. It is enough to show that probabilities will factorize for sets as simple as this to, to conclude that probabilities factorize for any Borel sets. Okay, and how can we prove this proposition? The proof of this proposition, it will use our good old friend uniqueness theorem and pi systems. So let us move to the proof. As I said, the direct implication is immediate. There is nothing um, surprising there. Uh, now suppose that we have that equality for every uh, collection of n numbers, for, so for every vector of our n. So this is this will be our set. This is a subset of our n. Or to be um, to be to be even more precise, this is a a Borel set of our n. And denote this family of sets by uh, calligraphic E here. And well, if we come back here, this equality, this equality, it says, it says that the distribution of these vectors and the product measure of each of their distributions alone, they coincide on this family of sets, this family here of sets given by uh, this expression that have an expression like this, where a1 up to an can be any number. And now to conclude, the, con the conclusion is, is very simple. With all these tools that we have at hand so far, there's not much to do. This collection is a pi system, isn't it? It is a pi system. Um, it, they generate a set of borrow sets of Rn. Well, this we are we are in a finite measure space, so we don't need the, the, the assumption of this increasing sequence of whatever that was uh, required in the theorem of uniqueness that we saw at the beginning of week two. 
So since these two measures, this measure and this measure coincide on the spy system and the spy system generates the whole sigma algebra, we can conclude that they are the same, which means we can conclude exactly what is uh, being said in this proposition. This concludes the proof of the proposition. This concludes this video lecture. And this also ends this uh, rather long unit.